needs to be an integrated transport system to liberate the potential of people like me, not just to go from A to B, but to find their way to work, to education, to training, to be welcomed and appreciated as travellers on the train system and enjoy seamless journeys just like everybody else. So I was born pretty much with a silver spoon in my mouth. But I scraped through my A-levels and I got into medical school. I played loads of rugby. After a year, and I bumped into this gorgeous student physio called Rose. And we went to the rugby ball together and we fell into each other's arms and danced the night away. It was just like magic. So we lived together for about a year and then went on a holiday to Turkey. We were left the harbour one day, sailed round to this little immaculate bay. Taverna at one end and a large hill, mountain at the other. And we both decided that we'd go ashore, climb up the mountain and enjoy the sunset. I decided then and there to propose to her when I got to the top. We arrived at the top and I didn't have a ring. So I picked up a tiny pebble, a black pebble, and I put it into her hand and said, would you marry me? She looked at me and smiled, threw herself into my arms and says, yes. Of course. But we started back at university in September and I went pre-season rugby training. It was the first session. It was a hard, hot day, gruelling exercise and suddenly a crash tackle fell to the floor and I was looking up at the blue sky. The ground wasn't there. My body had no feeling. My muscles wouldn't move. I'd become paralysed from the neck down. After the operation, I went back to medical school, but during that time, I got a really bad infection in the bone of my hip. I had numerous surgeries, about nine different operations. Unfortunately, I was getting sicker and sicker with this infection in my bone. The surgeon came back to the ward to tell me, sorry, you've got two options. Either go home and die, or stay in hospital and die. Obviously, I talked to Rose about this we decided to go for a second opinion. And the new consultant was really helpful. I'd been with him and down at Stanmore for about nine months when he came into the room and says, I've got a plan. We can try and operate and it might fail, in which case you'll die. Or it might clear the infection and you'll survive. It's 50-50. The operation was successful, there were Three surgeons there are operating on me for 13 hours and when I came out I went to intensive care. Eventually I got back home, went back to medical school and enjoyed my time there. And I started to gather strength. 90% of that strength of course came from Rose. Where else? But gradually I started to learn to build my own strength. Now I'm not saying it's been easy, far from it. It's been really hard. Sometimes I would undervalue my own potential and other times people would put barriers in my way. You know, I remember first time I travelled on a train, it was in the guards van. Really embarrassing experience. So after I qualified as a doctor, the GMC wouldn't let me practice. And my PhD was around disability and employment discrimination. And there was a lot of it about. And I'd apply for jobs, 50 or more, 100 or more, I can't remember. I never got, got as far as the interview. And they used to get a letter sometimes, not always, but sometimes, saying I was overqualified or I was too disabled. There was no protection of disabled people's rights. So I decided that I could use my PhD to better effect. And I did some photocopies of it, about 50 copies in all, and sent them in the post to a number of MPs who I thought were quite influential and open-minded towards anti-discrimination legislation. And eventually this resulted in me being invited to a dinner with William Haig, who was the then Minister for Disabled People. And he put this bill through Parliament and it became an act, the Disability Discrimination Act. And that's established rights for disabled people, but it's not really enough, is it? I mean, it's a bit like creating a level playing field. And I know from my sporting days that playing on a level playing field really does seem fair, but not until there's a strong wind blowing in your face. And I think that's where we are now with disability. We've got the barriers removed, or more or less, through the Disabilities Discrimination Act. 
but we're now facing a howling gale of low expectations. But for me, I just don't want to go to Waterloo. You know, I might travel up there from my local station, but I want the ultimate, what everybody else has. It needs to be an integrated transport system to liberate the potential of people like me, disabled people. The opportunity is there. All we've got to do is grasp it.